Let me ask you about this research project that is now going on, what some people have called the connectome, uh, this <laughs> extremely ambitious project to, to map the neural circuitry of the brain. I mean, it's, it's, you know, sort of almost beyond comprehension to think about it. I mean, there are nearly 100 billion neurons in the brain, trillions of synapses. Let's just say, theoretically, somewhere down the road, this can be mapped. How close are we to understanding consciousness then? <laughs> I, this is, no, I, I, I know a lot of the people in that project, and so I feel like if I answer, I'm going to be sharing one of their ideas, so maybe I'll attribute it. But I, one of my colleagues, Partha Mitra, who works out at Cold Spring Harbor, is trying to develop a, um, a stitched digital atlas of the detailed connections of the mouse connect home. It's one of, the, one of the kind of projects in that space. And he points out that many of these cells their connections are so manifold across the brain when you actually do one of these uh, studies that they're doing, where you take ultramicrotomes and take the entire brain and trace out every possible place. That, you know, that's going to require different theoretical models and laws about how systems that have this architecture might even possibly work. So I don't know that we're closer, but that isn't the right direction, in my view. Dave? Dave? Well, it's an absolutely fascinating project. I actually had lunch today with someone who's working on this, uh, this project, you know, the Brain Activity Map. They're uh, trying to get you know, funding to really get the whole, uh, you know, the whole brain for maybe it'll be a, a, a fly and then uh, maybe a shrew, <laughs> you know, the, the, the tiny little trust shrew, and then maybe, you know, 50 years, a, a human brain through the right kind of uh, imaging techniques if the right, the right ones can be developed. And I do think that once we've got that kind of tool, I mean, neuroscience is obviously going to be revolutionized. Because in neuroscience, we're just at the mercy of our tools, and the tools today have been very limited. You know, A new imaging technique comes along, like fMRI, and suddenly well, the, the science transforms, but it's all just arbitrary what it gives us access to. Having access, for example, to every bit of every neural firing in the brain and every, uh, every connection is going to suddenly put us in a position where the mechanisms start to be transparent to us. But it's still the mechanisms. Mm -hmm. It's still the mechanisms. I think what we end up having is probably a situation where we get an extraordinarily sophisticated science of the correlations. You know, presumably be able to manipulate the brain and, and simulate certain things and see how co one will even be able to do it in principle to oneself. A great, uh, actually it was a psychologist, Paul Meal, who wrote an article back in the 1950s called The, the Complete Autocerebroscopist. <laughs> it, was like, it, was, it, was just, it was exactly this, this scenario in a thought experiment. You have a picture of your brain there. Um, you, know, you are, you are the, the experimenter. You, you are in this, uh, this scatter. You have the complete data about your brain in front of you. You can experiment on your own brain and see how your experience changes. So this, in principle, we have the vast trove of objective data about the brain, vast trove of subjective data about consciousness. You would think then one would at least be able to abstract out the relevant kinds of principles that connect the objective here to the subjective. Now, whether that means we cross the mind-brain gap, I don't think it ever, it ever goes away, but we, we boil it down to the simplest possible principle. But would that, be diff would that be not be correlational? I think it's, my own view is the best we can get is correlational, but we can get better and more better. systematic. We can get, more we can get lots of correlations. Yeah. All, all you have in physics ultimately is, you know, some fundamental principles are in a certain sense correlational, the, the law of gravity. But we get a simple principle that generates the data. I think, um, you know, they say in physics the, the ultimate goal is a set of laws so simple you can write them on the front of a t-shirt. So, you know, maybe there's, there's a goal for it. If it got to the point where we had laws of consciousness connecting physical processing to consciousness, so simple, you could write them on the front of a t-shirt, maybe that wouldn't remove the mind-brain gap because you've still got the principle. I think we would call that a pretty powerful theory.